Ontario's wetlands and aquatic ecosystems are being threatened by non-native species. Invaders from around the globe. But a remarkable success story is emerging from Ontario's wetlands. There's a natural predator managing one of our best known invaders. People are asking, where has all the purple loosestrife gone? It had a real effect on the biodiversity of our native wetlands. A number of control mechanisms were tried through the decades um, until the mid 80s when someone had the idea of investigating biological control. Today, the quiet efforts of a tiny leaf feeding beetle are leading to the large scale control of purple loosestrife, one of Ontario's most tenacious wetland invaders. Purple loosestrife is a wetland plant. It is an invasive plant. It's an exotic plant that came from Europe many, many years ago in the 1800s. It produces lots of seeds and it spreads very quickly. And it moved into a lot of wetlands in North America. And that impacted uh, virtually hundreds of species that survive in wetlands. It impacted the, uh, the way the wetlands function in terms of uh, water recycling and uh, water clarification and so on. And at that point, it's, it's not the best for wildlife. It can get so dense that wildlife can't get through it. Left unchecked, it's, it becomes a real problem for our wetlands. In Ontario, concern was mounting and purple loosestrife populations were exploding. Shorelines of rivers and lakes, roadsides, low-lying areas, and specifically wetlands were affected. About 75% of our wetlands are threatened by development in Ontario. So when purple loosestrife was introduced, it created one more stressor on those systems that are very important in terms of ecosystem functioning and uh, for fish and wildlife. We've tried uh, mechanical means to remove the, the purple loosestrife. The problem is if you leave even a little piece of root there, you can end up with a new plant. In the mid-1980s, the potential for controlling purple loosestrife naturally using a technology called biological control was being investigated. In Europe, the hunt for natural predators of purple loosestrife was on. Biological control is a management technique that uh, involves taking a non-native invasive species and going back to the place of origin of that species and finding its natural predators and then essentially reuniting them. Well, not just any natural predator will do. They have to be thoroughly tested. They must be safe to use. The risk to other species, especially native species, must be low. That is important when we're looking for biocontrol agents. We need to find something that's host specific, something that isn't going to feed on anything else. In 1992, after years of testing, Agriculture Canada approved two species of beetle for release in Canada. The Gallaricello beetles are leaf feeding beetles and the larvae and the adults both feed on the leaves and the stems of the plant. These species have co-evolved over the years um, and now they have, they've become so specific with one another that the beetles can't survive without purple loosestrife. That's not an unusual relationship in the plant insect world. And these beetles have evolved much like the monarch butterfly has evolved with milkweed, these have evolved with the loosestrife, and that's all that they feed on, so that's why we're using them here. Extensive testing and monitoring have been done in both the U.S. and Ontario to ensure that the beetles are not affecting native plant populations by switching their food preference. All the research that's been done to date shows that the beetles do not have any negative impacts on native plant species in North America. Initially, releases were by the University of Guelph, but the project soon blossomed to include a collective of governments, conservation groups, and volunteers. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters Project Purple was aimed at education. Through a number of different agencies, they've now been released at over 400 locations in Ontario alone. And what effects have the beetles had in Ontario? The impact of the beetles has just been phenomenal. Because of this feeding action, the plants start to get smaller in size, the root masses shrink, uh, the flowering uh, is cut back, and because there's fewer flowers, fewer seeds are produced. Um, with time, individual plants can disappear altogether, and uh, with more time, uh, plant communities can be drastically affected just through the feeding action of the beetles. 
As the numbers of beetles increases, the adults fly to find more plants. In areas where there are lots, they can be collected and moved around to new locations. We cut the stems that have the, the insect larvae on them, and we collect them, and we can actually transfer them. Today, the threat of this invasive plant species, once considered a beautiful killer of Ontario's wetlands, is changing. The landscape is really changing. We're hearing from people, what happened to purple loosestrife? Is it not a problem anymore? We're just not seeing it. Essentially, the beetles can now be found in virtually every watershed in southern Ontario, and also in a number of watersheds in northern Ontario. And because the program has focused on watersheds, the ecosystems have helped the beetles along. On over 80% of the sites where the insects were released, there's impact to the purple loosestrife. But the plants are not disappearing altogether. Loose strife will always be a part of the plant communities here in Ontario. The beetles don't eradicate the plants. Um, purple loose strife is their only source of food, so it's not in their best interest to get rid of all of the loose strife. And there can be fluctuations with time in the number of beetles and the amount of loose strife in a location. The, the numbers of plants get down to the point where it's just a nice pretty flower in amongst the, the wetland uh, vegetation. That will control the, the uh, numbers of beetles that we have. So what we're really seeing is large tracts of watersheds where loose strife is still there, but it's much less apparent than it was 10 years ago, for example. So biological control returns that wetland to a pre-invasion state. So the loose strife is suppressed and the native plants begin to come back into that environment. And in turn, the native wildlife also will begin to come back in and use it. This biological control success story is offering hope that a little beetle with a big appetite will control purple loose strife and serve as an example for the control of other non-native invaders of the future. All the work is done by nature. The solution is, is here before us. There's very little input required on our part now, which is one of the beautiful things about biocontrol. It's very inexpensive. It's simple, it's passive, and it's forever. And we hope that it will help lay the groundwork for support from the public and from government for additional programs like this to address the concerns for other invasive species in the future. So, if you know an area in Ontario where purple loose strife is thriving, call the Invading Species Hotline. But before you do, look way down into the plants. Tiny beetles may already be there, gobbling up one of the most well-known invasive plant species of Ontario's invaluable wetlands.